Hey, right and here we got uh, Jack Star. Which song are we playing right now to get things going here? We're going to play um, a song called False Messiah. And uh, that was one of, <clears throat> excuse me, that's, that's off of Jack Star and Burning Star featuring um, Rhett Forrester, great singer. We're going to go ahead and play that, and then we'll be right back um, with Jack Star here in just a few minutes. Don't All right, well, let's do this thing.
That was awesome. <laughs> See, there's Thunder. Good. I am here, man. That was ridiculous, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, man, Sam. <clears throat> how are you doing, Jack? Very good, man. Happy to be on the show. Who am I talking to? Is this Will? I'm Will, Will? and the other guy's Thunder. I am All right. Kevin Thunder, man. All Better right, known Will. as a Thunder Midget. <laughs> Sounds good. Nice talking to both of you. Nice talking to you, too, man. That, that's ridiculous, man. I mean, just just phenomenal guitar playing right there. Wow. Well, I'm still um, I'm still learning, but I tell you, I listened back to it, and uh, I was actually, like, surprised, you know, when they uh, reissued it, because I went through a lot of masters and, you know, listening to a lot of different takes and all that, and and I was, like, thinking, damn, I wasn't too bad, because we're talking 1984, you know, so I was like, okay. It's not. It wasn't bad for back then. Well, you know what? The one thing that you just said that really uh, got me right there is that you know what? You're still learning, and you know, as a musician, you you got to keep it up right there. Because as I was talking earlier on the show with uh, Will right there, you never know. There's a 15 year old in a garage somewhere that's 10 times better than anybody. Like oh, yeah. they came out of nowhere, you know. And it's Absolutely. just amazing, you know. And and to think that you're the best. Right. That that's when that's when you you know right you know. Put your guitar down and call it a day. You'll get a job at Best Buy because you don't need to play anymore. But, yeah, it's just amazing, well, you, know, you know. It's funny you mentioned, like, 15-year-olds. Man, there's a 12-year-old in Orlando. I was just on YouTube just, like, two days ago. And this kid's phenomenal. I mean, he's just – even his originals are great, and he's, like, 12. Yeah, well, Orlando, uh, Cocoa Beach, Merritt Island, that's our hometown right there. Bill and I both grew up in Merritt Island. So, uh, yeah, that's our stopping grounds right there. Oh, that's fantastic. Where Where am I calling now? Actually, well, you're talking to you're, you're, uh, you're talking to two places right now. Bill lives in uh, North Carolina, and I live right outside of Memphis. So, and I know your new gig is a blues band, Jackson yeah, Blues well, Band, and Memphis is the you know kind of the house of the blues, blues of you know really yeah exactly yeah. Well, I like all kinds of music, you know, like blues. Of course, I've always liked blues, even when I was uh, just totally doing metal. But the main thing I do really is metal, and um trying to get some other things going, you know, and when I play local gigs, I do bluesy kind of stuff, and uh, I'm actually working on a totally different project right now with a um, a singer named Sybil that was really known for jazz, but I kind of got her out of the jazz thing, and we're kind of well, forging, will... forging a new, different kind of music, you know? Well, I love jazz because I have a family member that was a big jazz, he's a big jazz player, jazz writer, and uh, was with a jazz rock band in the 60s and 70s. Oh, really? What were they called? Blood, Sweat, Blood, Tears. Sweat, Tears. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. That was like the definitive, uh, you know, jazzy yeah. rock band of that era. Them in Chicago, you know, the horns and right. all that. I mean, yeah. it was beautiful. I'll never forget, you know, Bill and I were like 13 years old, and we first started our first band. And my uncle, who was their keyboard player and trombone player, was in town. I'm like, oh, you got to come see our band. Right, we got a exactly. band together. And we did nothing but make noise in a garage. And he's like, yeah, you know, guys keep practicing. And our singer's like, so what's the biggest show you ever played? And he's like, I guess it had to be Woodstock. And at that point in my life, time stopped. And I'm like, my uncle yeah. played at Woodstock. And oh, yeah, you know definitely. it right there. You know, it was, it was awesome. And then, you know, graduating high school, I went out to L.A. for two weeks and got to meet some people that he knew. And, and oh, wow. look, it's a well, new, yeah. new, it's kind of crazy right there. But, yeah, well, when you said jazz, yeah, I love the, the jazz sound right there. Right. Well, my feeling really is that uh, I don't really like to categorize, you know, different music. I just think there's either good music or bad music. And for me, the good music generally has one component, that being music that's played from the heart, you know, music that is sincere and music that, you know, you can feel the passion of uh, whoever it is that's singing or playing, you know, behind the music, you know. So when that occurs, whether it's punk music like the Sex Pistols or whether it's blues, you know, like Stevie Ray Vaughan or or heavy metal, you know, like Iron Maiden. You can hear the sincerity, you know, or Dylan, you know, strumming a guitar and with oh, a harmonica absolutely. wrapped around him, you know. Old and, um, slow air clapped him. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's just that connect, feeling you know, where you know if there's a truth to it. Exactly. And, 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 and you can music. hear that, you know, you can hear that a mile away when someone is delivering oh, absolutely. that kind of... Uh, and I think that the thing with what I do is that everything that I've ever done has had that. Um, and some of the people that have, you know, like reviewed, you know, my albums and written articles about me or what have you, they've always come back to the fact that they like the sincerity, the passion in what I do. 
I'm, and, you know, and then some people, you know, will say, well, they like that better than, you know, the technical guitar players that, you know, know every scale in the book and can play every arpeggio, you know, because I certainly don't yeah, know yeah. All, your, all the arpeggios. So I'm actually more technical than people realize, but... I can agree not, with you 100%. Yeah, there but not to the level band. of... Yeah, you know, like, oh, not sorry, to the level ahead. of, like, the, the guy from Yes or somebody like that, you know. I mean, you know, I've seen him do a seminar. I, I don't even know the guy's name. Steve Howe, I think, is it? Is it Steve Howe, the guitar player from Yes? Yeah. Bill, you'd know better than I do. Yeah, yeah I don't know. But anyway, I saw him do a seminar. I mean, the guy was just, he was just an encyclopedia of every, you know, scale and every guitar, right. you know, song ever written, you know. I'm not like that. I would rather hang on three notes, you know. <laughs> well, you know, it, 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 like a band that I knew back in Central Florida back in the day when I started playing music was a local mm-hmm. band, and they had two different guitar players. One played with heart that was, I mean, and he was as good as the other guitar player. Right. Maybe not as technical. Did not do the solos as technical. You know, the scales weren't right. as robotic. Well, Both were the band? great guitar players. A-Wall. Let me guess. Don't tell me the name of the band. Are you talking about a band called Stranger? No, I'm not no. talking about Stranger, but close. But Stranger the same way. Guys. But Stranger was fantastic. This is even a smaller band than that called AWOL. They had a guitar player named Pete Bredo who was just, he wasn't a robotic, but he was right. perfect. He was perfect okay. on his case. And just a melodic and perfect. But they had a guitar player before that, Eric Mankey, that was more heartfelt. And when right. he played a solo, it was like, listen here, right now, you're going to feel this. You're not going to hear this. Right. And, and that's what both I like. are, they're as good as each other, don't get me wrong, but yeah. the one touched me more, Eric touched me more than Pete did. I was like, man, I can feel that right there. I mean, that's right there. It, you know, it, it gives you an emotion. Well, you know, I'll always remember this one guy wrote an article about my band and about me in a German magazine, and he said, he said this quote, and I'll always remember what he said. He goes, Jack is the remedy for the heartless technicians that play guitar. If you're sick of them, Listen to Jack Starr, and I was like, "Whoa, this guy gets that's me." That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, that's uh, yeah. that's kind of <clears throat> that's like my. That's weird. I, I have a question for you, Jack, real quick, and I'm sorry, Bill, to interrupt you. Now, <clears throat> I'm a bass player. Right. I have a hard time not respecting, but playing the same style as Billy Sheehan. Right. Because I feel that he is a guitar player with four strings. I play with my fingers, and I play with heart, and I play with the drums, and I'm not trying right. to show out as much. Right. You like to Is that you understandable like to... to you? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's the kind of bass player that I like to play with, and that's the bass player that I have in Burning Star. I mean, Ned locks in uh, with Rhino, and they create this incredible groove, you know, and it's an iron tight groove, and then you can sink your teeth into it as a guitar player. And and for a vocalist, it's really, really crucial because you need that foundation if you're going to do a, a good vocal melody or a good guitar solo. And you got to know where the stops and starts are. I mean, Right. And, I mean, there's there's bass players like that, you know, that um, play like that style. You know, so I played with a bass player. I even did an album with a bass player who had a whammy bar on his bass. <laughs> that's now awesome. That's, that's I used to play radical. with a wah-wah pedal. <laughs> Or and but, uh, a, it was a pedal, not a Wawa pedal, um, a yeah, plunger. But you know, I a better prefer, sound. But I also played with an incredible bass player that was like Mr. Groovemeister. He played in Foghat for like and did ten albums with Foghat. And I was oh. in a band with Greg McGregor for about a year and a half. And uh, I would just be just mesmerized looking at this guy play and thinking, you know, wow, I'm sharing the stage with this guy. You know, that's sold like 40 million albums. You know. And it really just was just amazing to uh, to do shows with this guy and to hear. And a lot of what he did appeared to be simple, but it wasn't. Oh, because... yeah. No, no. There's nothing simple about playing bass guitar. That's what really right. gets to me. You see a lot of people like, oh, you're just a bass player. But you don't understand right here. This right. is a foundation right here. You have a uh, drum set that's making mm-hmm. noise right here and keeping a rhythm. And then right. you have someone over here who's making a melody. Your job is to be the key master and try and bring that together. That's right. Man. Without being well, too obnoxious. I wish all bass players could hear your words of wisdom right now. <laughs> uh, you know what? You know, <laughs> am I right? I mean, you're the foundation right there. Your well, job is you. to connect those two that's things right. together. And that's what I've always tried to do as a bass player. And yeah. you know what? Everybody I've ever played with is like, look, man, the drummers love me. The guitar players love me. The singers love me. I'm not the best, place, best player out there. By, okay, by, but by the any. important thing is do hot-looking chicks love you? That's the important thing. No, <laughs> oh, they always 
always have. I'm the, I'm the sucker bitch, man. Come on now. There you go, brother. All right, and on that note, talking about bass players, I'm sitting here with Ned. That we tonight is our our rehearsal night. Me and him have been working on this album for like the last, I don't know, like six months, and we're like in the home stretch. We're we're going to be uh, going into the studio soon. But um, with Rhino, with Todd, it's the exact same lineup that we had, and we got a lot of good stuff going on uh, since last year. We're uh, we're going to be headlining two festivals in Europe. Which, nice. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, just to get to the even though they're mid mid level festivals, I mean they're not. It's not Vakken, you know. It's not bang your head, but but they're good mid level festivals, and uh, and we're headlining, so we're pretty psyched about that that we got to that. Hey, point. You're playing, man. That's what it's all about right there. I'm yeah, sitting on and, and, talking on the radio with you, wishing I was there playing with you right now. Yeah, you know? I appreciate that, man. And, and, no, and here's all, the other just... thing. And we even got uh, we even got a festival that we're going to do in America, which is like going to be our first major festival in America. It's called 80s in the Park. And that's coming up, uh, I don't know what month, uh, September. Yeah, it's coming up in September. And that's going to be in Florida. So uh, and that's actually uh, thanks to a good buddy of ours named Charles Knight who helped us uh, get that gig and and it was kind of cool because when I first saw the first publicity for it, we were right next to this band called Zebra that I kind of grew up with on Long Island. They were, I mean, they were like the Beatles of Long Island. It was Zebra and the Good Rats and Virgin Steel, which was my first band. We were kind of like the band that everybody heard about and everybody, you know, everybody loved, but we weren't playing gigs every week we were playing gigs maybe like every month or every month and a half and we were going to europe and our albums were coming out in europe on import and um but zebra is going to be one of the stars of this festival and uh, and the weird thing is like nine months ago i did a show in baltimore for uh it's a charity called fallen blue and they helped the wives of of you know police officers that were killed in the line of duty Nice. And Twisted Sister, uh, the drummer AJ Perro, and uh, singer from Journey, and a whole bunch of people. Anyway, I got asked to do it, and so I did it. I went up there and I performed, and um, it was weird because I hadn't, I had lived on Long Island. Okay, this is really funny for like my whole life, pretty much. And I had never really, you know, gotten close to Randy from Zebra. You know, we never really, never really talked a lot. We did a bunch of shows together, but never really talked. And then here we are in Baltimore like nine months ago, and we got to really be friendly. And now it turns out we're going to be doing a show, and they're going to be there. And uh, I think the, the yeah the guy from Rat, uh, Steve Percy, and a bunch of other bunch of other guys. So it's going to be yeah, a cool I'm show. I'm going to try my damnedest to get down um, get down to that 80s in the park. Um, yeah, you really should. You really should. Where, where are you guys be doing that? You guys doing that in Melbourne? That's going to be in Melbourne at the I think Wickham Park. Look, I know, I know it very well. I mean, that's my, that's my, as I said, that's our stopping ground. Will you yeah. say you're doing that in September? I'm gonna try and get it's, down there too, man. Yeah, it's gonna be very cool. Uh, it's not really our first festival in America, but it's definitely gonna be our biggest American festival. I mean, it's, a great, a, it's a great venue, great venue. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've done some awesome, other man. festivals, like um, I've done the Metal Mayhem Festival. I've did the one in in As, Asbury Park. They have a festival. Yeah. I I did that one. I did the one in Maryland. Uh, I did some other wow. ones, but but this is the this is bigger because they had like twelve thousand people last time, which yeah. totally so, like, so shocked I, me. I, I saw that you were actually you were born in Paris. Yeah, that is true. Yep. And you grew and, up in New York. And I grew up in New York. Yeah, I came to America when I was 10 years old. Did not speak a word of English until I was 10. Really? No. And and what happened is, you know, my my dad was an American GI uh, in the Air Force, the American Air Force. You know, i got to clarify that. No, he wasn't in the French Air Force. He was in the American Air Force. And I was born, I was like born on a military base. So, you know, I was born in France, but I was also an American American citizen. An American off the bat, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And uh, and then uh, ten years later, you know, my dad, you know, told my mom, "Hey, we're going back to America," and it was like, "America, cool. That's where they have rock and roll, and that's where they have hamburgers." And you ended up, and, and you ended up at New York of all places. Yeah, of all places, right? And, that's uh, lovely. I was and born in New York, but American. I was born in the up. Uh, I was, I was born in the country. You were born in, in New York. Yeah, the country part, though. You know. Okay, like upstate, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Other, I was born in the city, you know. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, cool. They're like, well, oh, you know, yeah, fucking right, uh, right there. Yeah. You were born in Italy? That's cool. Well, you know, <laughs> what was good for me is, like, I just learned how to speak English through, like, television. You know, watching all these, like, dumb television shows, you know, like uh, Gilligan's Island and all that stuff. And you, you call know, everybody Skipper and shit. That's yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> So within like honestly, like within like six, seven months, I was speaking English. But I think it's easier when you're really young to learn a language oh, because absolutely. oh, absolutely. I have an older brother, right? He still speaks with a French accent. He's five years older really? than me, and you know he'll be he'll talk to me and he goes, uh, Jacques, can you tell me please uh, what uh, is going on? You know he's got that French accent. And that's right. Like, and that could have been me. You know I could have been like, uh, <laughs> you know I can't I can't even do a good French. I can't even do a good French accent, you know. I know, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter when you're a musician. And I don't understand this. Well, you can hear somebody sing on the radio, and everybody sounds American. Everybody right. sounds American until they exactly. talk. I'm like, that fucker's British. That guy is from Australia. That right. guy's from France. That guy's from Germany. Why is that? You know, like the first I, I don't time. I know like, why that is. Yeah, you know, like the first time I I heard uh, Klaus Meine, the singer from the Scorpions. You know, he was getting interviewed and. Uh, and you know he was he sings English beautifully you know like uh, I mean, you know he sounds like he's an stuff. American right and then you hear him talking it's like he's got a thick German accent you know oh we are so happy to be here on MTV we made this music right here is because we like the way the guitar sounds this way yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like what the hell just happened here I know a minute ago you're like you know I, it totally blows my mind I mean and, and that's every genre of music whether it's country or not there's this new guy Keith Urban. He oh, sounds yeah, yeah. totally American. He looks like an American, sounds like an right. American. Stop singing, you give an interview. That's, that's right. right. He, he's like, all right, where's a kangaroo popping out of your ass? What's going on here? I know. Well, you know, Australia is like the 52nd state anyway. They're very yeah, familiar I know. to America. But, you know, getting yeah. back to the whole European thing, I think the interesting thing for me is like growing up in Europe really exposed me to like a lot of classical music and European music. And uh, if I had just grown up in America... I think that I would be playing a different kind of music because I didn't even really hear rock and roll until I was about 10 years old. I was, you know, like in Europe, they play like classical music on the radio, you know, and all kinds of like uh, different, you know, different kind of music, you know? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you're getting, you're getting you know, feedback in the microphone or something. There, like, okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> is that better? Is that better? That is. Okay. Well, okay. Well, you know, you, you would have been playing different, you probably would have been more like the Sex Pistols, maybe, I yeah, I mean, because they listen to the same kind of music, but, you know, what they did is, you know, like, all right, well, you know, we're going to play this kind of music, we're going to speed it up a little bit here, and we're going to, you know, <laughs> hop the drums up a little bit, and we'll see what happens here. Right, or I would have been, or, or, I or think I honestly, Beatles, you know? maybe, or I think I would have sounded more like Dokken, or, like, for me, right. like, bands that sound really American would be Dokken, Motley Crue, Poison, yes. uh, uh, Great White, those are, like, very American-sounding bands, um, well, bands that sound English, here. what? That's a great thing. You're talking about poison here. Tomorrow, two, my sons are going to school, and they're having spirit week at school. And it's 80s week. And I've oh, got them wow. both dressed up like poison. <laughs> I'm going to take pictures. Thing. Post it on Facebook, man. Uh, I, will, I, will post, I will post it on Facebook. Look, I've got one with a mullet wig that I've got a bandana around. And he's got the cut-off shirt with lightning bolts and everything, bandanas <laughs> around his hands and everything. Jeans cut up, tucked into his boots, ready to roll. And he just thinks it's the coolest thing. He has yeah. not left the mirror for like two hours. He's like, oh, devil horns, devil horns, look at me. I'm 10 years old. I'm like, here, let me, let me play you a song. Here's a little poison right here. Here's a little Miley Crew. Here's a little Crimson Glory. And they're like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Like, uh, poison, that Miley Crew, Crimson Glory. There's a, right. there's a lineup. <laughs> I, I, I think, just, uh, I'm just like, I think they're a Florida little skin row they I they just were, give them a were, bunch of little. They are. They, they were. Florida, Crimson Glory. I think they were from Florida, right? They were, and um, yeah, they, I mean, I they, so, yeah. they broke up, and their their lead singer is now the lead singer of Queen Drake. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Todd. Todd La- Latore. Yeah. Hey, well, we've got Todd Queen too. Drake. Queen Drake's a great band, but the the band of my choice, I think, is the most ridiculous band ever. Is Dream Theater, and the drummer Mike is just their old drummer Mike was ridiculous. Right. So what? And I would hate. Oh, and ahead, I love him to death, but I'd hate to play with him because I don't think I can play off beats like that. I don't know if I can do that. Well, it's, yeah, it's pretty difficult to do that. So what other songs from uh, from us do you like? Ned, my bass player over here, just said, just ask me. Because we always like to ask people, like, which songs got to you? Which songs did you guys, you know, particularly dig? 
Well, there was a reason why I played um, <coughs> False Messiah first. I mean, False I, Messiah, I, I, okay. I, I totally, you know, I, I totally dug that. That was, you know, I, I, I like the, the guitar flick, you know, the, basically the, the groove of the, of the riff and whatnot. Um, right. I, I just like the, the way that it flowed. Um, the next one that I want to play is, um, is, the, is the Fans of Time song. Love that song. I think that what I I'll tell you what I really like about it. If I can critique my own stuff real quickly, I like the fact that during the lead solo, instead of just going nuts and you know playing a real speedy lead solo, I did the exact opposite. The band went into halftime for the lead, and I purposely played really slow and melodic. Yeah, I have a um, I have an original like that too. It, it's a it's a cheesy little ballad. But um, but I um, the the solo in it I mean it's nothing special nothing you know nothing um, flashy or anything like that it's just a really slow but it fits the song perfectly and um, right. that's probably like it's, it's my favorite solo that I that I've got recorded. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Again. If I can tell you right now, mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you right now the the bass playing in the background. I, I just love the sound of that right there. I mean. Okay. Okay. You, you hear bass playing in the background? Okay. Hold on. Uh, let's, let's hold on. I want you to say hi to Ned because he is over here. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you guys are interrupting our rehearsal, but that's okay. Here's Ned. I, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> hey, how's it going? What's up, Ned? Man, how you doing, brother? Yeah, pretty good. Man, I just heard you jam it out a little bit right there. Yeah, I was just uh, playing along the false messiah that you just played. <laughs> well, uh, right on, man. Well, uh, welcome into the show, man. Uh, glad to hear from you, brother. I'm a mutual bass player myself, man. Oh, cool, cool. <laughs> Where are you guys based out of? Actually, um, I'm in Memphis, Tennessee right now, and he's in uh, North Carolina. I'm in Fayetteville, North Carolina. That's a good portion of the country covered there. <laughs> yes, it is. We grew up in uh, the Melbourne area. Cocoa Beach, Cape Canaveral area, right there. Oh, did you really? Yeah, cool. Yes, we did, man. I, thought, I graduated Merritt Island High School in '91, man. Uh, met Bill at the age of 13, and we uh, played in bands there and all the different clubs around there up until the time we were about 25 years old, man. Yeah, well, yeah. There's still some of those places kicking around, coconuts. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Co- yeah, absolutely, coconuts and uh, the hustler. You know, you, do, you know the hustler. The hustler's still around. Yes, sir. They changed names, but we've done a bunch of warm-up shows there before we go to Europe. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, uh, Ned, where are you from originally, man? I'm from Massachusetts originally. How did you get down to Florida, man? Good old Boston. Um, actually, I originally wound up in Florida in the late 80s, just from hooking up with Paul Chapman from UFO. Okay. Well, took guitar lessons and from him at Florida Discount. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I I actually taught at Florida Discount back in, in those days, too. Oh, right. maybe that's where I maybe that's where I recognize your name from. Because when uh, when Jack told me that you know his bass player Ned Maloney, I'm like I, that name sounds familiar. I know that name. <laughs> yeah, we know a lot of the guys from back in the day, man. They're you know Dead Serious and uh, A Wall and Tin Can Jets and all that shit back in the day. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Back in well, I was here from like '87 through '90, uh, working with Paul. And uh, teaching at Florida Discount, which they're still there. Were you Different right there owners. in the corner? Yep, still there, yep. Different owners. They actually serve beer now. You should come down. <laughs> really? Florida yeah. Discount Music serves beer? Yeah, they got a little club in there. It's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty awesome right there. I can check I that out. I was down there not too long ago and drove right past the place. I went to my buddy's house in Palm Bay. And, uh... Yeah, they actually had a, a sign up recently saying that they, you know, uh, come on in, we serve beer. Something like that. <laughs> That's awesome, now, man. I would think that Jerry Sale of East Coast Music would have thought of that before Florida Discount. <laughs> Which one? East Coast Jerry Music and Cocoa Beach. East Coast Music and Cocoa Beach, oh, yeah? the, the pawn shop that was in. Yeah, you'd think yeah. you'd have come up with that first. But anyway, yeah, it's awesome, man. So uh, you guys are playing this big gig here in Melbourne here not too long from now uh, at Wickham Park. Yeah, yeah, it should be great. I mean, actually, the... Uh, the one they just did a couple months back, you know, I'm sure that he was kind of a leap of faith to see if it worked. But uh, actually, Jack and I went there, and Paul, for that matter. We all went over there and we were like kind of just uh, guests in, in um little autograph booth and whatnot. 
but we saw that people that people coming from all over the state, which was really cool. It, you know, it wasn't just a local show. Um, you know, I mean, there was ten, twelve thousand people there coming from all over. You know. Yeah, that's awesome, awesome, man. Awesome. The, which is nice. Thor, for Melbourne Thor area, played something that, like that going. Uh, Thor played that show too. <laughs> yeah, John Michael yep, Thor. In fact, yep. Yeah, Jack's good uh, friends with a drummer from that band because he's from New York originally. Okay. Thor. Yeah, I um. I reviewed the um, Rock and Roll Nightmare movie on my blog, and you know, because I I came across it and I just I started watching it and I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to review this because it is so you know, basically it I didn't I mean, it's not it's a, it's a it's a bad B movie basically, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean I I liked it though so I mean. You know, I, I was if I wasn't really trashing the movie in my review. I liked it. I enjoyed it. You know, for the for the campiness and the corniness of it. I I posted it on on John's Facebook page, and he actually you know he actually um reposted it and liked it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like. I would like to see this. I would like. To, they're, they're, that's another band that I would like to see in concert. Uh, uh, on a different real. note, on a different note, real quick. You said you're from Boston, right? Yeah. So you're a Patriots fan, aren't you? Yes, I, I, I have to admit to that, yeah. Ah, oh, God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, we, we love you. Go. We're from Florida. We're from Florida, and we hate you because of that. But we love your bass playing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're used to being hated at this point up there, you know. This, all you know. fair and loving war, and all <laughs> fair and loving football too. So, you know, as exactly. Dolphin fans, um, I hope Brady breaks a shin or something. But um, oh, yeah, I, I, didn't, I, didn't say that I didn't mean to say that out loud. I really did not mean to say that out loud. I really don't <laughs> wish any injury to him. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, God bless. I just wish that you know the Dolphins and the Patriots were. Playing an AFC championship, you know, like back in the day, it was the Dolphins and the Bills. But anyway, we have our wishes, we have our dreams, and you're, you're on the top of that one right there. Well, you guys get to play spoiler that one week. I think they'd be at home if it wasn't for the Dolphins. Oh yeah, but we beat yeah. you, and then we couldn't beat the Bills or the pay, or the Bills or the Jets two weeks in a row. Like we were <laughs> indolent on hover rounds. I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> Yep. But that anyway, congratulations, fun. and I I hope you the best. And you guys have a better record against the Manny guy anyway, so you probably win and you'll go to the Super Bowl, and then we'll see what happens there. But anyway, that's yep. you know on the other side of music, and that's football. And now that my feelings are out there, and I feel better now, my uh, therapist said I should get it off my chest, and I feel better now. <laughs> yes. So anyway. well, back back to music though. Jack and I have been we're working on the new album, and it's uh, we're really excited. We got basically have all the songs together and um, started recording basic tracks. And uh, you know, it's always it takes you longer than you want to to get it done, but it's it's uh, shaping up to be a great record. Well, you got to take uh, that this, time. Do you know, album um, is this album going to be uh, <clears throat> Jack Star and Burning Star album? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Stand I, I your ground is, is the title. Okay. It's, that, that's really nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. So when, when are you guys uh, planning for it to uh, come out? Um, oh, before yeah. this year, definitely. You know, before the end of the year, and um, we're hoping we can have everything recorded to mix. You know, before the summer. Um, that's the, you know, the, the our management that. Um, you know, they mix it over in Europe. That's what they're hoping we can get it done in that time, which is what we're shooting for. Right on. And, um, uh, so we're case, just, um, go ahead, buddy. Go ahead, Bill. So, no, okay, we're, we're going to say should have a problem. shouldn't have any problem getting it out this year, you know. Right. Do you guys have anything online right now? Um, any newer stuff online now that people are going to kind of check out or just, you know, kind of sit and wait and be like, all right, it's on the way, so we got you some. No, nah, nothing, nothing right now. Just secret links that we passed amongst ourselves to, uh, oh. to so we can communicate. <laughs> but uh, not yet. You know, we, we pretty much. The thing is, we put it all together and they mix it in Europe, so it's not like you know we're leaking stuff out. Um, you know, right. it's just it's just not complete enough to to do. But uh, do you guys have any uh, ideas of a, a tour in America of any kind? That, uh... Um, possibly. You know, we have some areas that we could go to, and we've we've thought about it. 
Um, right now, we're just so wrapped up in trying to get the, the album done, and we get these shows in Europe. Typically, we'll play a few local warm-up shows here, and um, right. and then then go over. Which, in this case, actually, we'll be coming right back from um, Europe when we do the '80s in the Park thing, which will be cool. Right. But but we'll be doing a you know we always do a few shows. Like I said, the Hustler, we usually go there and just do some low-key stuff to get ready, lose blues or whatever. Um, gotcha. But uh, you know, we'd like to do some stuff. I mean. Me being from New England and um, spent a lot of my time up in the Mid Atlantic area, Baltimore, and uh, and uh, Jackson, New York. We could we've talked about it. We could probably go up and do a little run and do pretty well because we're all fairly established in those areas. But uh, you know, plus we can keep, you know we've got a lot of good friends in other metal bands in different parts of the country. So we're right. kind of thinking it'd be nice to do some stuff in uh, New England. You know, like Steel Assassin, I don't know if you heard of them, I'm friends with those guys. There's, you know, just just work with the bands, Mystic right. Force, just just ideas we've had. Um, Are you the same bass player in the blues band? No, I mean, I've done some of that with Jack in okay. the past, but... Um, I, was, I, 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 I live right outside of Memphis, I know how big the blues thing is right around here. And I didn't yeah. know if he was going to be maybe come around here with that, you know, the Jack Star blues thing. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's um, I, I did so much blues in the past. I used to wake it up in the middle of the night and have twelve bars in my in the middle of the night. I just had to get away from it. <laughs> and to be honest, and I didn't want to say this to him, I can't stand blues. I love jazz music because it's so. Yeah. He heard you. <laughs> yeah. It's, fine. it's just not my thing, dude. I do. You know what? Thunder. Yeah. Thunder. I, I, I oh, no, no, I, I'm gonna say it. I don't care. I, I don't. I don't care for blues music. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not my thing right there. I mean, it's the same thing over and over again. The same bass riff, and it's the same guitar riff with different little solos over it. You get some jazz kicking, and you can just play and feel it. Flow. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. It's more like what you want, whatever. Guitar player and a harp player. <laughs> that's fine. I mean, I'm just telling you how I feel, and that's what I, I mean. I love jazz music, but blues music. I've seen a hundred blues bands, and I've seen. 90 that are the same, and I've seen 10 that are good. Yeah. That, yeah, that you know. The blues, blues I like it. Just, right there. just uh, you know, the thing is, you'd have, I just think if you get a, if I get a tremendous drummer to play with, um, I don't, you know, I can lock in on different styles, which is fun. That's a different style, yeah, if you've got a good drummer. But if you have an average drummer and a guitar player, yeah, I don't know. There's just a difference between good blues and then there's average blues, and average blues I don't, I don't care for. I mean, yeah. it's just it's the same thing. It sounds the same to me. It's just repetitive. Yeah. We're going to go. I, I mean, we're gonna you, get metal, you get metal, and you have runs, and you have differentiators in there. And it, if you have jazz, there's, I mean, it, it changes the whole way through. There's there's no conformity 90% yeah. of the time. And, I mean, you get a thrash band, and it's just so fast. It doesn't matter what you play. You play a punk band, and it's just fun. But you get a blues band that's an average blues band, and it's and I'm like, all right, enough's enough. Yeah. Well, Jack, I, I we're gonna uh, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and break, and I, I okay. was gonna play Sands of Time, but okay. now I'm gonna play Blues Tears Falling, which is which is a blues song, and you're gonna wind up eating your words here. Okay? No, I won't. I just, as I said, as I said. <laughs> A good blues song is a good blues song, but there's way too many average blues out there. Well, I vote for Sam. Way, this is way above average. This is, <laughs> this is amazing. Okay. Well, okay, and, that, and I understand that. <laughs> Jack, Jack's getting antsy. He wants to play. No, Tell him to play, play, play it out, man. I mean, it's awesome. Right, play it out. Play, play a riff. They're going to go to a break. Okay. All right, here's a little, here's a little Jack live. All right. Tell me the next star, please. I'm just kidding. That's fucking awesome, man. <laughs> All right, good talking, guys. I'm How awesome is it to play with that guy? Bye-bye. That was it. <laughs> How awesome is it to play with that guy right there? What? I said, How, How long awesome have I been, is it to play with that guy? Been, how long have I been playing no, with that? How awesome is it? I mean, oh, how does that feel to play with that guy right there? It's like, you know what? I can sit here and just stump on my E string right now, and they wouldn't even care. He's that good, man. Oh, That's yeah. awesome, he's, man. He's a great bass player. He really is. It's it's really good. 
to play with good people, you know. But um, That's awesome, yeah, man. man, Sands of Time. It sounds like a good one. I think I like that song. Okay, well, we'll do Sands we can of keep time, talking. But I do, do want to play. I do want to play Blue Tears Falling before you know. Like maybe we'll play that one on you know after the show's over, like to to care you know to end the show with. But yeah, you know that that one ended up on the Out of the Darkness reissue. I know. I I got I got that one from your um, from your record label, and I was surprised to see that one on there. Cool. Yeah. I put it on there because I thought even though it was blues or blues Z, it still fit in that album. Yeah, it it was it was great. <laughs> I mean, I, um, of the of of the songs, you know, I've, I've, I'd heard some of your stuff, you know, some of your music in the past over the years, but um, but in you know getting you know, reacquainted with it and everything over the past few days uh, before you know before we. Um, Booked you for this show. I probably listened to that Blue Tears Falling probably 15 times. Oh, wow, that's I a lot. It. Yeah, I, I I loved it. It just it's it's not blues like like Thunder here is talking about like there 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 there. Right. No, it's hey, like hey, hey, you're. I'm saying, what I'm saying is I I I'm from Memphis where everybody tries to play the blues, and you have somebody yeah. who just plays the same bass riff at every song. They do that little run, and the guitar player does the yeah. same thing. You know, do ding, 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 you know, that's that's a totally different thing. If you can play the blues, you play the blues. Like BB right. King plays the blues. He certainly and, does. And you can listen to BB King all day long, but there's so many bad blues bands that I've gone and seen throughout mm. my years, from the oh, you know, yeah. from the age of 18 to 40. That are you know, it's just it's the same thing over and over, and they're trying to do something that. You have to have a certain feeling for it. And that's all I'm saying is that I've seen a right. lot of bad blues bands, and that's why I'm not a huge blues fan. Mm-hmm. Well, Unless I hear really you'll good like blues this. We'll play it later. Uh, we're we're going to go ahead and go to break. We'll, we'll play um, we'll play Sands of Time. But I do have to give a shout out to Lisa Matthews, who is busting my balls on this on the Facebook page, saying that um, blues music rocks. I'm the one that's defending it, Lisa. <laughs> hey, look, no, I'm not saying blues music sucks. I'm saying there's a lot of sucky blues players know, we're, out there. We're, I'm just busting your balls. And I know you can well, bust my balls all you want, and I hate to say that. But well, I just, Lisa, you know what? I'm more of a jazz bass. You know, I like that more of that jazz sound to it. Blues is kind of slow to me, and it depends on how it's played. That's all I'm well, saying. We're just busting, we're just that's busting right. your balls, not there. Well, you know, Lisa is my beautiful girlfriend, and she's always right. So i got to say she's right. Well, then you know what? And you know what, Lisa? I retract everything I've said. You <laughs> are right. I, I, I'll take everything back right now. <laughs> I apologize. I do, I do. And you know what? Blues is awesome. That's right. For the most part, you know, but I know where you're coming from when, when a lot of when a lot of it doesn't appeal to to me, but some of it really appeals to me. So I know where you're coming from. I mean like Gary Moore appealed to me. Uh, you know, Clapton, Hendrix when he was playing the blues, DJ Bray Vaughn. And then there are guys that just they're so timid with their interpretation of the blues that it just doesn't connect to, you know. But then you hear singers like Etta James, who's just phenomenal. And, right. You know, see, now, it, see, that's, that's the yeah. type of music that, you know, that's, that, that's good blues. But exactly. I've heard so many, so many people that go out there that try and do that. Right. And so many local bands, especially, there's so many guys out there who turn 50 who have been rock stars. Right. In their, you know, 20s or whatever, they're like, oh, I'm 50 now, I'm going to play the blues. And they right. try and do the doom, do doom, do doom, do doom, do doom. And all they can play is a fucking gallop while the bass player plays it, uh, you know, plays this, you know, uh, damn, look, I'm getting so frustrated, I can't even talk. It's all right. Like, you know, it's he plays a right. scale while he's playing this, you know, gallop, and I'm like, that's not blues right there. No, it really isn't. But, you know, it's like, it, it, it's a good point, though, what you're making about all these guys that, that start playing blues, you know, after doing metal or whatever. Like, take even, like, Dave from the band Y&T. He put out right. a blues album, and I I actually bought it. I was in a record store, and I and I just was thumbing through, you know, and it said Dave Manichetti from Y&T, solo album. You know, so I figured, well, I, he was a good metal player. Maybe he could be a good blues right. player, too. But, unfortunately, it didn't really, you know... Do it for me. I wasn't, you know, blown away by it. Some people can't transpire. Some people can't transpire different styles, no. you know. Like, there's a lot of people who can't play jazz because it's so un- inconsistent, but it has to be consistent. Right, exactly. You know, and I know that sounds 
stupid to a lot of people, but jazz is inconsistent consistency right there. Well, I got a, right there. Well, I got to quote Heike. She is the editor of this newspaper, this magazine out here in uh, in Brevard, the county that we uh-huh. live in, and. And I was, yeah. like, telling her, like, I don't know, like a week ago, like, I was one of the judges in this uh, talent contest for, like, you know, up-and-coming bands, you know. And I was telling Heike about this new thing that I was putting together with Sybil, who's a great female singer. And I said, oh, Heike, you really got to listen to it. I think you're going to like it. And I I guess I was trying to, like, I was trying to get her interested, you know, to hear it. And she just turned around and said, Jack, you can play anything. And I thought that was really a cool compliment, and I think what she was trying to say was that I can, that I'm pretty diverse. Like I can play all kinds of different styles, you know. And, that's and, you know, as a musician, that's awesome. Yeah, and to me, that's a great compliment because oh. I really can. I mean, I, I've I've done a jazz fusion album, I've done a Latin album, I did a country album with Ned called South of Georgia, and um, right. and that's on the internet. And the singer of that of that band still performs with Sasha Georgia and he goes out and tours. But me and Ned were the you know, we were the founders of that band as well. So you know what, I really think I could play anything. Well you know, this is my first time talking with you and getting to know you. And you know what? That's one thing that me living in Tennessee now, I moved from Florida, Melbourne area, to right. Tennessee and I there's a big country music scene up here. I mean, you uh-huh. know, and, 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 you know, you have to be blind not to see that. But me when I first started out in the bands, Bill was a guitar player, and he was the reverb king, and learned how to play guitar without the reverb. I started out as a singer, which I have, obviously, a radio voice, but not the kind that, you know, Motley Crue has. Right. But I can sing country. And that's something that I've always thought about pursuing because of my deeper voice. Well, you know, you should definitely think about that, it. You know, country is cool. Country you know, music is cool. Latin music is cool. I really honestly cool. like every kind of music. I, I mean, there's even rap music that I like, you know. I mean, just every kind of music. I've got a couple of rap songs that I like, but you know what? I get irritated sitting in the car with my, I'm driving my kids to school and they put too much rap on. Because, you know, I'm like, look, man, can you just listen to one song that I love right here? One song. Let me, let me, let me put on a little bit of Judas Priest for one second. Absolutely. You, know, like, you, you, you want your kid? Give me something. Give me a minute here. No, I've got a son of mine that was a beach bum in Florida seven years ago before I moved up here that now will know we're nothing but jeans and cowboy boots and country music, period. And I'm like, but your dad had long hair down to here. <laughs> Can you listen to one one song that has an electric guitar? You know, but it is what I it hear is. You. I hear well, you. It's um, all good. Uh, let's go. With, I want to, um, you know, I, I want to get... You know, at least at least one more song, and before we, you know, be- before we wrap it up, uh, your your choice, uh, your choice, Jack. But, um, well, <laughs> I think uh, blues, blues I think that or? you know all the stuff that we've done is really good. Um, and honestly, I know it sounds weird, but like I pretty much like everything I've ever put out. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. No, I mean it's, it's I know it sounds crazy to say that, and and the good thing is it's all getting reissued. Uh, there's seven reissues coming out this year. From oh, wow. stuff that I did in the past, there's Rock the American Ways coming out with a uh, with a DVD accompanying it. Um, the Orange album, which was only available in Japan and Germany, that's coming out. Uh, there's an album coming out called Before the Steel, The Roots of a Metal Master, that's coming out. The two wow. Phantom Lord you albums are. C- coming out. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And, and I, would say I don't know why, you but it seems like master. yeah, it just seems like it seems like honestly, like people are starting to discover me. I guess if you hang you know, around for like 35 years, they feel sorry for you, and then they start discovering you. <laughs> you're, like, you're like a fine wine, brother. You're like a fine wine. You, you just mature, you know? I mean, I don't know, man. It's, it's good. And then, the, and then the bad thing is that I look at Ned, and Ned still looks like he's like 28 years old. It's like, what the hell is going on, man? <laughs> you know what I mean? Ned never I gets older. Joke. Look, dude, I know the feeling right here. I, mean, I just turned 40 this year. Right. But joking around, my kids, I told you, had uh, their uh, – Tomorrow's a spirit day of school, so I dressed my kid up as this 80s rock guy. <laughs> well, I actually put the fucking wig on and put a bandana around my head and took a picture of it. Like, that's what I used to look like, but about 30 pounds later. And I'm like, right. come on, are you fucking kidding me? I got to lose <laughs> like about 20 pounds. I know where you're coming from. <sighs> yeah, but but now, I'm getting bald. I'm getting you know bald. What? I'm like, playing I can still music. play the guitar. Exactly, but playing music makes you lose weight, so I can't wait to go back on tour because... 
just the excitement and uh, the whole the whole thing of touring and playing out every night. You exactly. lose weight. You lose uh, weight. You know what, and, man? Um, yeah. Is there any you plug it out there right there? How can people get your music? Man? Tell them. Tell well, them get it's on YouTube. Everywhere. It's really everywhere, you know. Um, there you go. It's everywhere. I mean, it's on every, pretty much every uh, place that sells uh, records over the internet, from, from like, you know, Amazon to uh, Barnes and Nobles to Best Buy to every place. It's it's there. I mean, all you got to do is Google Jackstar out Jack of the Star, darkness, man. which is the new one, and and a lot of stores actually have it. But you know, what's going to happen is. You walk into a record store, the record stores that are remaining, you know, you're not going to see a gigantic cut-out cardboard, right. six-foot-tall jack star. You know, it's not going to happen. But if you do look in the S section or in the J section and you spend like four or five minutes looking, you probably can find a copy. It's there. Well, I, mean, I was in, I I was in my mall. Go, I was in my mall the other day, man, copies. and uh, I, I found me, and I was happy. <laughs> There you go, man. And if hey, it's not you know there, what? if it's not there, wait, it's in the computer, which means that you can order. And, and tell them to right. get that some bitch in there. You know, what? Jack, it's been a pleasure having you on our show, man. Well, you're the real deal, it. man. And, I loved it, and dude, Ned is still playing in the background. Hold on, Ned. I know, I hear him, man. I've heard him playing for the last 15 minutes, hey, man. He's still playing. Him. Let's tell him, man. I love, I love Let's it, break. man. Let's and, break. Let's break. All right, we're going to get it. back to our Bill, rehearsal. how much time book. we got left? It's 11. It's 11. Well, play whatever you want, man. We're going to get back to our rehearsal. Let's rock we want to just tell you, it was a pleasure being being on your show. All right. Uh, uh, you know what, man? Thank you for Jack, being on. Man, I appreciate you being there. Uh, can we talk to Dale one more time? All right, man. And as I sign all my letters, keep the metal burning. That's right. Keep the metal burning right there, man. All right, man. Have a good night. Hey, can I talk to Ned one more time? Okay, wait. Here's Ned again. Okay. Hey, great talking to you guys. Hey Ned, man, keep that keep that shit together, man. Be the foundation, man. Love you, man. All right, man. We'll catch you next time around. All right, man. Well, we appreciate you being on the show, man. Um, anything you need, I mean, anytime you guys want to get on the air, do whatever you want, you guys want to do, man. Just let us know. All right. All right. Thanks for having us. We'll have to catch back up with you once the album comes out. Absolutely. All right. Um, we'll definitely watch out for that. Let us All know. Right. You guys go get. It. Get with us after this uh, thing in Melbourne. If we're not down there, get back in touch with us and let us know how that Melbourne thing went at the big show you guys got at Wickham Park. Yeah, sounds great. All right, man. I appreciate Thank you it. Touch. Okay. Talk to you later. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. What's up there, William? Oh, not much. Um, that was a pretty good interview right there. What do you think right there? Yeah, I had fun. Um, we might want to. We might want to have people, you know, guest call in at eleven instead of ten thirty. But well, you overall, know, no, actually, this gives us a little time right now to overview everything that we've heard right there. And I think that actually was a great interview. Um, I had I had fun too. I mean, people were commenting on the Facebook page. It, um, you know the the girl that was the lady that we found out was um was Jack's girlfriend um, Lisa she, she commented um, also Sybil the singer uh, that he's working with now she she commented as well so we're 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 gonna air we're we're gonna dissect this you know on 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 the air and we'll we'll just you know <laughs> yeah just you know what go ahead this is where you know what we were talking about going to you know and and uh. Me and you have talked for weeks about how we were going to get this to transition the way we wanted to, and having somebody that we both didn't really know as well as we should have became a really good guest. Absolutely. I, uh, you know, yeah, we're... Ned, fantastic on the on the radio, and the same thing with Jack Starr. You know, and from them being in the area that we're from, that kind of helped things out a little bit. But you know what? It had a lot. Musically, where we we had we had a lot to talk about, so well, I really think I, that you know what the idea of our new design of heading to that direction of talking to a musician, I think it really panned out. I liked it. I I had fun. I'm sure Jack did too. Um, it's going to be interesting to see the the numbers when they come out. Um, you know, if you 
And you know what? And right now, we had, I'm a, not worried about we had the a lot of yet. We had, we, you know, we had several several people in the chat room. There's no telling how many people were actually listening, but not in the chat room. So I mean, I I, I like it. I mean, it, it's it's a it's a it's a brilliant um, it's a brilliant first you know first step in in the relaunch of the show with the direction that we want to go. I think um, I think so as well. All right, so now we but got right about now, 30 minutes left. Let's, well, let's, let's let's just go ahead and wrap it up. I'm gonna I'm gonna play Sands Sands of Time, and let's just We're not gonna, go ahead. Go ahead and play Sands of Time, and we'll come back on the air after that. Okay, we we can do that. Um, All right, so this is another song from. Uh, Jack Star. <laughs> oh God. Uh-huh. <laughs> Are you there? All right, this is this is this is Sands of Time. Was that good? Was that good? Was that good? Was that good? Huh? Are you there? I'm here. Okay, well, that, that was my uh, attempt at trying to make it sound like um, I didn't forget the name for a second. <laughs> anyway, no, go ahead and play another song from Jack Star, and then we'll come back and we got 30 minutes, and we'll talk a little bit more about music. All right, we'll do that. Um, here, here's Sands of Time.
see you guys next week, all right? And all right, William, you ready to call it today? We're gonna close out with blue tears falling because you're you're giving you're giving our guest hell about um about blues and everything. I'm I'm gonna No, no, no. I you know I, I, gave I know a true what you're saying. Know about saying. Blues. Shut your mouth then. You know I'm right. There's there's like a, a lot of like I said there's before, a lot of horrible blues players. Balls. Like I said, okay, before, all right. listen to listen to this. Okay. Real good uh, blues. Alright. This yeah, is we're, Jack we're Star gonna, playing some real blues. You know, yeah, we're gonna take it out with this. Alright, buddy. I love you, man.
Right and here we got uh, Jack Star. Which song yeah. are we playing right now to get things going here? We're going to play um, a song called False Messiah. And uh, that was one of, <clears throat> excuse me, that's, that's off of Jack Star and Burning Star featuring uh, Brett Forrester, great singer. We're going to go ahead and play that, and then we'll be right back um, with Jack Star here in just a few minutes. Don't All right, let's do this thing.
All hey. right, that that was that was awesome. <laughs> you there, Thunder? Good. I am here, man. That was ridiculous, man. Um, <laughs> oh, and <clears throat> how how you doing, Jack? Very good, man. Happy to be on the show. Who am I talking to? Is this Will? I'm Will, Will? and the other guy's Thunder. I am Kevin right. Thunder, man. All Better right, known well, as a Thunder Midget. <laughs> sounds good. Nice talking to both of you. Nice talking to you too, man. That, that's ridiculous, man. I mean, just just phenomenal guitar playing right there. Wow. Well, I'm still um, I'm still learning, but I tell you, I listened back to it, and uh, I was actually like surprised, you know, when they uh, reissued it, because I went through a lot of masters and you know listening to a lot of different takes and all that, and and I was like thinking, damn, I wasn't too bad, because we're talking 1984, you know, so it's like okay, it's not it wasn't bad for back then. Well, you know what, the one thing that you just said that really uh, got me right there is that, you know what, you're still learning. And, you know, as a musician, you you got to keep it up right there. Because as I was talking earlier on the show with uh, Will right there, you never know. There's a 15-year-old in a garage somewhere that's ten times better than anybody. Like, oh, anything yeah. came out of nowhere. You know, and it's Absolutely. just amazing. You know, and and to think that you're the best. Right. That, that's, when, that's when, you you know, right, you know. Put your guitar down and call it a day. You'll get a job at Best Buy because you don't need to play anymore. But, yeah, it's just amazing, well, you, know, you know. It's funny you mentioned, like, 15-year-olds. Man, there's a 12-year-old in Orlando. I was just on YouTube just, like, two days ago. And this kid's phenomenal. I mean, he's just – even his originals are great, and he's, like, 12. Yeah, well, Orlando, uh, Cocoa Beach, Merritt Island, that's our hometown right there. Bill and I both grew up in Merritt Island. So, uh, yeah, that's our stopping grounds right there. Oh, that's fantastic. Where Where am I calling now? Actually, 